Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 30th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Apple wasted no time and released today an update for the High Sierra vulnerability that allowed logins as root without a password. The patch is only a little bit more than a megabyte in size. It came out as Security Update 2007-1 and does not require a reboot of the system. However, if you enabled the root account either to protect yourself from the vulnerability or because you had another reason why you needed the root account enabled. After you apply this patch, it will be disabled again. So you will have to re-enable it if you need to. On the other hand, if you do not need the root account, then you're probably better off leaving it disabled. Apple also notes that after applying this patch, you may have issues with file sharing. If you do run into the problem, there is a link to a fix within the security bulletin. And mobile security company Hitech Bridge took a look at Android Bitcoin application and shouldn't surprise anybody that they came up with some pretty grim results. Hitech Bridge operates a free online service, Mobile X-Ray, that can be used to analyze mobile applications for vulnerabilities and of course they use that tool to examine a number of different crypto coin mobile applications. Now, just looking at the top 30 most popular applications, it looks like about a third of the applications are vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. About the same number also has hard-coded sensitive data like passwords or API key. 70% of the applications do still support SSL version 3 or TLS 1.0. So if you are using a mobile application, to keep your crypto coins. Take a look at their list and see if your application is vulnerable or maybe there is already an update available for it. And loading JavaScript into users' browsers in order to mine crypto coins, that apparently also is not going away. Have a new variation of this where the JavaScript was loaded not just in a pop under window, so it wasn't directly visible to the user, but it was also hidden underneath the Windows taskbar, which makes it, of course, more difficult to discover and then close the window. To make it even more difficult for a user to realize what's going on, this particular miner is actually kind of nice in that it was configured to not use the full CPU power, so you may not notice the occasional speeding up of fans and such that has given away some of the prior versions of this scheme. And Xavier came across a pretty interesting PowerShell script in Pastebin. Now, uh, this particular PowerShell script does download another paste, Base64 decodes it, loads it into memory, and then executes it. So this file never hits the disk. This is yet another example of fileless malware. Xavier goes over how he discovered it, uh, how he decoded this particular script, and then identified the command and control server that is used by this particular piece of malware. And if you are using the .dev, uh, D-E-V, top-level domain internally for development sites, you may have noticed some issues this week with Google Chrome. Turns out that a while ago, Google did get a hold of the .dev top-level domain as part of all the different top-level domains that Google has recently acquired. And they're not really doing anything with this top-level domain yet, but they have started to market as HTTPS required within Google Chrome. So what this means is that as part of this change, the .dev top-level domain was added to the pre-populated strict transport security domain list. 
And as a result, the browser will refuse to connect to any domain within that top level domain that is not HTTPS. Now, an additional difficulty here is that you will have a hard time getting a certificate for these domain names because after all, you don't own the domain. Your best option here is probably to go with an internal certificate authority or just to use a different top level domain. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.